Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to go ahead and graph this uh, function here. And to do that, uh, well if you don't have a calculator, putting this into a calculator is very simple, but uh, I don't have a calculator on this and some of you guys may not be able to use a calculator for your classes. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this the old-fashioned way. I'm just going to make a table and we'll go from there. So in this I have uh, uh, enough room for five values. That's really all we should need on this uh, because of the characteristics of exponential functions, which you can watch the video for that on my channel. But I'm going to start with x. Uh, I'm going to choose values of x and then find the corresponding y value, which really just is uh, the f of x value. So, uh, I mean, if that makes you feel better, you can replace that with f of x there. I'm going to go ahead and keep that as just a y because it corresponds with our graph. Most of you guys recognize that axis as the y-axis. The next thing I'm going to do is choose a few values of x that I can put into the function. And then I'll find the corresponding y value. So if I have x is, uh, let's just say, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, okay? So it's kind of symmetric there, but it should show us exactly what's happening to the left and to the right for the negative and positive values respectively. So I've given myself some space. I'll write the function, and we'll start with negative 2. Of course, this means that really that that negative 2 applies to the 1 and the 3. However, 1 to the power of negative 2 is not going to make any difference, but 3 to the power of negative 2 will because that would give us then 1 over 1 over 3 squared, right? And if we divided this, you would end up with 9. So if we look at the point negative 2, the corresponding y value is 9. So there's our point there. Now we'll do the same thing, but with a negative 1. So we have 1 over 3 to the power of negative 1. It's really 1 to the negative 1, but 1 to any power is just 1. So we have 1 over 1 third. 1 divided by 1 third is 3. So that gives us a 3 in the table. And at negative 1, we have a value of 3. And continuing this pattern, this is now to the power of 0. And we know anything to the power of 0 is 1. So that gives us the y-intercept there. And I went ahead and put that in the table. Now if I have anything to the power of 1, that's just the identity. So that would be 1, and that would be 1 third here. So that's very close to 0. And when I square this, all right, it, uh, I'm going to show this in expanded form. I really have 1 third times 1 third which is 1 ninth, so that corresponds with our 2. It just means it's closer to 0 here, like this. So very quickly, this thing will increase this way. That was a little sloppy. It will quickly increase to the left and then to the right. It's going to get closer and closer to 0. And that's about as close as I can get with this thickness of line. And right there, that is the graph based, again, on the table. If you have a calculator and your teacher lets you use it, then that would show it that way on a calculator, all right? Uh, make sure on the calculator, too, that you put that one-third in parentheses, okay? All right, and that's the graph. That's pretty good.